Welcome back to To The Point. After Governor Whitmer delivered her State of the State address this past week, Republicans in the legislature reacted. We talked with Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky to get his take on the state of the relationship between lawmakers and the governor. Senator, the governor delivered her third State of the State address this past week, and as the leader of the Republicans in the Senate, much of what she was saying was being said, I think, directly to you and your colleagues. Tell me what your takeaway was from that speech. Well, it was a uh, victory lap of some of the things that have been done in the past, some things that were done in a bipartisan, uh, cooperative manner. Uh, and she claimed, staking claim for a lot of things that, you know, actually we started and kind of drug her to the goal, to the, uh, across the uh, finish line on. But then this, this uh, heavy emphasis on calling for bipartisan and um, cooperation, you know, it's uh, a bit hypocritical, uh, to be honest with you, Rick. Um, since March 13th of last year, I have uh, met in person with the governor one time. That was on the... Uh, at the Romney building out on the uh, uh, patio outside. And um, I don't know if it was August or September, but that was about the time of it. Um, and there have been precious few invitations to have conversations. Most of the invitations to, uh, to uh, uh, governor's events have been in the era of, uh, under the guise of presentations. I don't consider presentations conversations. And this is, this is a very verifiable. Uh, even the data calls that she says, says, she actually implied that we don't respond to, which is also a lie, because we have somebody on every call. I've made about half of them, maybe a little less. But Senator Vanderwall or Senator McGregor, when he was serving, uh, is on almost virtually every one of them. Um, but those are presentations, they're not conversations. You can't do problem solving and you can't do working with each other when it's always a presentation and uh she owns that and i'm ready i you know i'm prepared i'm almost every quadrant meeting and quadrant meetings have been up until this week and i'll share with you an update there uh, have been mostly presentations this week and i'll give credit where credit's due uh, they changed the protocol and asked for input for the agenda for the cadre meetings, and it was a wonderful thing. I had an item I put on, uh, Senator Anna had an item he put on, and I'm hoping that that's a sign of things to come. When you heard the governor talking uh, about working together and cooperation, in fact, at one point she ever even said in this non-election year, did you take that as a signal that she is going to take a different approach than perhaps she did at the beginning of this pandemic when uh, I think a lot of people were trying to figure out what was going on, but However, this has played out over the past 10 weeks. Did you take that as a signal that she wants to do things differently going forward? I'd like to take it as a signal, but she has proven that she operates by polls and information. And I think she's concluded rightfully so that that's what people in Michigan expect. But until we actually see actions that support the language, actions speak louder than words, then I'm gonna call me and pay me a skeptic made me a willing skeptic to be to be wrong but uh right now i'm you know i'm not uh i'm i'm, I'm hoping that she's sincere about it but i'm not so sure when i look at the relationship between the legislature and the governor i am often confused i have seen you have moments of cooperation where things have gotten done i've mentioned this to you before yep. the auto no fault insurance which i frankly didn't believe would ever happen and making no judgment on it being good or bad, but just getting a deal. Mm -hmm. uh, you got that done, but that was pretty early on. You mm -hmm. did get a budget done in this uh, COVID cycle, which uh, was a smoother process certainly than the first one. But mm -hmm. there have been a lot of places where you just don't have a, don't appear to have any type of cooperation between the legislature and the governor. And just this week, 13 of the governor's appointments to boards and commissions were rejected. That's kind of an unusual move. And you said it yourself, it was to make a point, right? Uh, Rick, I'm really glad you asked that question. It was a purposeful political gesture, not to score points, but to make a point. And that is that until as governor, uh, recognizes the legislature as the representatives of the people 
and treats us as a co-equal branch, we are relegated to being used to be able to use only a few certain tools. The budget, of course, is one. Advice and oversight and, uh, uh, appointments is another. Uh, advice and consent, excuse me. Appointments is another. And uh, this was not about any of the individuals on that list. Not at all. I admit it openly. It's about making a point that we it's time to change. This governor has gotten very used to unilaterally uh, making decisions. Um, there isn't a single decision regarding to COVID that I can put my finger on that we, the legislature had any material head, uh, heads up or input to. And that's just, un that's just completely unacceptable. And, uh, you know, government really should only be doing two problems, two things, solving problems or exploiting opportunities. And I think if we're meeting and conversing, not just being presented to, uh, that 95% of the time we should be able to agree on the definition of the problem or a definition of the opportunity. And that's a great starting point. And then we start offering suggestions for solutions it always, when that happens, results in better oper better solutions than anybody doing it unilaterally. But we've had virtually no opportunity to do so. What would you, as the Senate Majority Leader, like to see done? Let's pretend for a moment that the governor is sitting over at that big conference table in your office right there, and you were going to go over and sit down at the table. What would you tell her that you and your colleagues would like to see her do that you would co cooperate with her to do? Well, I'd start with identifying that what she did this week, what they did this week with regards to changing the protocols for the agenda for quadrant meetings is a good first step. And then I'd simply say, do more of that. I'm not going to provide a, her a checklist of boxes that she could check and therefore everything's honky-dory. I'm not going to do that. This is a behavior change that needs to happen. And I think the people of Michigan see it. Uh, I think that uh, they're fed up with it. I think she's getting a lot of pressure uh, from a lot of folks that uh, you know they can't understand the illogical and confusing orders that come out, and those are the kinds of things that you know we have to we have to give her a hard time about. But I'd also would prefer to be able to avoid them, you know, because that's that's all frictional loss that's unnecessary. Well, what would you do if you were in a position to some degree? that you could say, here's what we should do. Let me ask you specifically for restaurants. They're scheduled to open on February 1st at 25%. What would you prefer? <laughs> to me, this is just another example of uh, illogical uh, uh, problem solving. 25% or six foot away from the tables. Why do you need both of them? If six foot away makes it safe, then let the restaurants have as much capacity as they can, that they can accommodate, placing tables six foot away. But adding on the 25% is, first of all, it's arbitrary. And don't give me any crap about it's based on science and data. And, uh, and second of all, those two things can't really be resolved together. If it's six foot apart is good enough, then by golly, let them have as many tables as they can fit in there six foot apart. That's, a, that's a, an example, Rick. And I'll ask for one more because this is a really hot button issue right now, and I know it's going to continue to be. There was an oversight hearing earlier today about winter sports in high schools, and the Republicans over in the House have come out with their COVID relief plan that would put some of that decision making back into the hands of local school districts. What say you when it comes to winter sports? Those kinds of de decisions should be made for the most part at the local level. We, and uh, another thing that is very frustrating, I, I know to me, and I suspect to the mess people of Michigan, is that one size fits all is a ridiculous solution for a state as diverse as Michigan is and as big as Michigan is. And, uh, you know, there's just no reason why uh, there can be some guidelines provided for safety protocols and then let the locals decide uh, how to execute. And they'll, by the way, if, if, a, if an unfortunate event occurs and there's an outbreak, they'll make the decision to stop doing that until a time occurs. Here, here's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that we saw, even in her presentation last night, when she decided to not make it with a mask on, okay? I'm hoping we're moving from away from a control and fear theme into a informing, inspiring, and trusting theme. Now, that is why our numbers came down. It's coincidental, maybe a little correlation, 
that the closing of the restaurants, unnecessary closing of the restaurants, may have contributed to the numbers coming down, but they were coming down anyway. It's because people are learning and they're embracing and they're doing the right thing. But there's never any acknowledgement. We have to keep the thumb on, keep the thumb on. It's a definition and a difference between government having a light touch or a heavy hand. And uh, there's no getting around it. As long as, so far as this, this governor in place, it's all about heavy hand. The governor asked for a number of different things in her state of the state address, including a renewed call for the uh, COVID recovery plan, which we talked about a little bit, and the House has their version. You said you're going to take a look at that. Right. There is also uh, some jobs programs that she was laying out, talking about a number of issues. And we also know a budget will be coming up here in a couple of weeks. How much of this are you willing to deal with unless or until you start having more conversations? So not much. Uh, what I'd like, this goes to your question earlier about what would I like to see been done differently. Let's take the uh, jobs incentives topic, okay? That is, and I'll call it a bit of a problem and also a potential opportunity to exploit. What I would prefer is we sit down and frame what the definition of that is together. And once we have that defined and framed, and we should be able to agree on 95% of that, then we start offering suggestions for uh, solutions. That's what I think, that's how I believe it should work. And if, I were, if the roles were reversed, that's precisely what I would have done, would do. And, um, but it's just not happening. Final question, that budget will be coming down. Do you have any indication or any feeling if the budget process this year will look more like it did last year, which was relatively smooth, or like it did the year before, which was a train wreck? I'm hoping for the former, not the latter. And, uh, but our, our, our stripes are not gonna change. Our methodologies are not gonna change. Our interests are not gonna change. Our values are not gonna change. And our respect for the people of Michigan is not gonna change. We'll have a final thought next to the point.